What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadskin. I am back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and in today's video we're going to be discussing the brand new badge that is going to be arriving on One Piece Treasure Cruise Global on the 28th of April 2018 and will be trusty characters in the next treasure map in May is going to be the debut of V2 Fujitora. Now if we go by the Japan timeline of things this is 100% supposed to be the next legend in line. The next legend after this will be a single legend with no new batch being V2 Rayleigh but in this video we're going to be discussing every single new unit of this batch and really we're going to determine whether or not it's worth pulling or not now as of me making this video right now we only have information that this batch is coming we do not know on the rate boosted characters we do not know if it's all gold we don't know if it's two times legend rate so at this current time I would say don't pull on this Sugo Fest because we have V2 Doflamingo coming you know within the next month or two and it's going to be a very very good Sugo Fest so I would hold off for that, but uh, we're going to be discussing the characters anyway, just so you guys know what to expect with the trusty characters coming out, and whether or not you are tempted to pull for these characters, because V2 Fuji by himself, he, he's a decent unit, he's not the top top tier, but he's still an extremely powerful unit, the best slasher captain in the entire game, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into the video. So the first unit in this batch that we're going to be discussing is going to be Rebecca, Dressrosa, former royal family's future. So Rebecca is a dex slasher striker type character and at max level at level 99 she has 2051 HP. 1203 attack and 403 recovery. Now, her captain ability will go ahead and boost attack of striker characters by 2.25 and also reduce damage taken by 15%. So, as a captain, not really the best. You're not going to be using her as a captain that much at all. Uh, if you're just starting off your account, she might be a decent captain, but overall, it's pretty bad. Um, she has a pretty decent special ability, though. So, it starts at 16 turns and it will actually go ahead and max at 9 turns. And if you go ahead and decide to limit break this character, she actually goes down by an additional one cooldown down to eight turns, which is quite good. But what it does, it will go ahead and deal 50,000 fixed damage to a single enemy and also will reduce your chain multiplier limit and chain coefficient reduction duration by five turns and also changes adjacent orbs into matching orbs. So this is a very, very good special ability. And remember, she is a, a slasher and a striker, so you can put her on sl slashes or striker teams. So overall, just, just from that alone is exceptionally good. She gives you some matching orbs. She helps you get rid of all those nasty chain debuffs. So overall, this is a very, very good character. Overall, very, very good. Uh, she does have a sailor ability though as well, that will go ahead and make strength orbs beneficial for herself, which is okay. It would be better if she gave matching orbs to your entire crew, that would be a little bit better, but still can't complain with that. But when you limit break her, she gains an additional sailor ability that will go ahead and boost her base attack, HP, and recovery of strikers and slashes by 50 points. So that's a pretty good sailor ability, helping out both those types of crews in particular. Very, very good. Her limit break abilities are pinch healing and critical hit. Uh, her critical hit is a 70% chance to deal 8% extra, which is a pretty bad critical hit, to be perfectly honest. And her pinch healing is only going to work if your health is below 20 so that's a pretty bad pinch healing as well. So her limit break abilities aren't the best, but as a character, she's going to see some pretty good use in slasher and striker teams, helping you get rid of that nasty chain debuff. The next unit that we're going to be discussing is going to be Violet, Dressrosa, former royal family's princess. Now, Violet is a quick slasher cerebral type character, and at max level, at level 99, she has 1999 HP, 1099 attack, and 446 recovery. Like the other units in this batch, she's going to have 30 cost, and she has 4 socket spots. Uh, and when you go ahead and have a look at her captain ability, she will go ahead and boost attack of all characters by 1.5 times, and then boost your belly received by 2.5 times. So this is a very reminiscent captain ability of the previous rare recruit Viola, uh, except this one will actually give you an attack boost um, and will lower the amount of belly you receive in comparison to the previous one. Um, so overall, you know, it's okay. It's a belly boosting captain. You can't expect much from them. Uh, but her special ability is very, very good, okay? So it maxes at 9 turns, and if you go ahead and limit break her, like Rebecca will max at 8 turns, but what she does is she changes recovery, tandem, empty, and block all into matching orbs then she'll go ahead and reduce paralysis and special bind duration by two turns and then on top of this she adds 0.5 to the chain multiplier for a single turn 
So she's another fantastic unit. Again, another slasher support unit that gives you really nice utility in removing special bind and paralysis. Exceptionally good. And she's also an orb manipulator, chaining the recovery tandem empty block into matching. So that's great that she removes the block orbs. And on top of that, she also adds to the chain multiplier. So this unit is fantastic, an exceptionally good rare recruit unit, especially if you are planning to make really high tier slasher teams. This unit is going to be used on a lot of high tier slasher teams to get around certain debuffs that specific Colosseums and or raid bosses that will be in your way. So this is a very, very good uh, unit for that. She also has pinch healing and also a critical hit, the same as Rebecca for her potential abilities. So nothing to really talk about there. But overall, she, she's just an exceptional unit, probably one of the better units of this batch in total. The next unit that we're going to be discussing is Kiros, the Dressrosa former royal family hero. Now, to many people, this is going to be the best unit of the batch, and, you know, there is a very, very glaring reason why he's the best of the batch, okay? So, he is a strength slasher striker type character, and at max level, at level 99, he has 2,096 HP, 1,496 attack, and 301 recovery. So overall, his attack power is exceptional for a rare recruit unit. His HP and recovery are pretty standard, though. His captain ability boosts slashes and striker characters' attack by 2.5 times, and also gives them a 1.25 HP boost. So overall, this is a, like a pretty decent um, captain ability for a 5-star rare recruit unit. His special ability, which will go ahead and max at 14 turns, when you max limit break him, he gains an additional cooldown reduction, maxing him at 13 turns, it will deal 30 times his attack in strength damage to a single enemy. He reduces bind and despair duration by two turns and will also boost the attack of slasher characters by 1.75 for three turns. So this guy is a straight power creep from 3 day to Yuzor. If you guys don't remember what he does, he is also a strength slasher slasher booster, but he only does it for two turns, a 1.75 boost. The fact that Kiros is a three turn 1.75 boost is very, very good as he can go ahead and use a boost on, let's say a stage four, and then carry that throughout into a stage five. So automatically, uh, Kiros is an, an immediately good unit, but then on top of this, he does a little bit of damage, which is fine, but he also provides you a little bit of utility as well. He reduces bind and despair duration by two turns, and he does all of these effects on a 13 turn cooldown. This is by far the best of the batch in my personal opinion. But let's go ahead and talk about the Sailor abilities of Kiros. Kiros will go ahead and add two times his attack as additional Titleist damage. So this is very similar to the Dex Rare Recruit Rob Lucci, who will go ahead and give you a little bit of a multiply of his attack as additional damage to each of your characters when you attack with them. So that's okay. And his second Sailor ability, when you Limit Break him, will go ahead and boost the attack and HP of Slashes by 50. So that's not a bad uh, Limit Break ability as well. And his potential abilities are Enrage, and his Enrage will go ahead and max at 150 additional attack, which is a very, very good potential ability. And his critical hit is a 70% chance to deal 8% extra damage, a critical hit, the same as Viola and Rebecca as well. So, yeah, I think a lot of people are going to be saying that this is the best of the batch. He's definitely one of the more powerful units. Uh, he provides good utility, a very good type booster, and provides a bit of damage as well. So, overall, Curus is a fantastic unit in this batch. The last unit that we're going to be talking about before we talk about the brand new Sugo Fest exclusive character of this batch, we're going to be talking about Bellamy, the Hyena, Dressrosa, current King's Assassin. So Bellamy is a Psy fighter driven type character, and at max level, at level 99, he has 2,800 HP, he has 1,308 attack, and 242 recovery. His captain ability is very plain and simple, a 2.75 times attack booster for the driven class. Very good captain ability, actually. But moving on to his special ability, now his special ability maxes at 10 turns, and when you max limit break him, he actually gains an additional cooldown reduction, putting him at a 9 turn cooldown. What he'll do is, is he will reduce your current HP by 50%, then he deals 10 times the amount of HP that was subtracted from this special in typeless damage to a single enemy. Then he also will go ahead and reduce the enemy threshold damage reduction, increased defense, and attack up duration by 3 turns, and he'll also give himself a matching orb into Psy. Uh, overall, his special ability is okay. The fact that you lose half of your health is a pretty big detriment to his special. Uh, he actually 
can deal some pretty crazy damage with his special ability, saying that though. Uh, but on top of this, he actually pr provides some pretty decent uh, utility, uh, removing threshold damage reduction being the damage limiter that uh, kind of like what Raid Kizaru does on one of those turns where he takes less damage from certain colors. Increased defense, which is the blue shield, that's actually really nice. And he also reduces attack up duration on the enemy. All of those durations are reduced by three turns, which is quite good. And then also giving himself a matching orb as well. Uh, and his potential abilities, he gets Enrage of 150, which is very good, and a slot bind self-reduction for 8 turns at max, which is also pretty good as well. But let's talk about his Sailor abilities. So his first one will go ahead and boost this character's attack against int enemies by 1.1 times. So he gets an extra 10% damage against int enemies, which is quite nice. It's kind of like a mini color affinity boost. And his second Limit Break ability will go ahead and make it so that if he has a Psy Orb and you hit a Perfect, you keep that Psy Orb for the next turn, which actually works well with his special. You can use his special, remove some debuffs, get a matching orb. If you hit a perfect with Bellamy, you keep that orb for the following turn, which is quite nice. You know, you can find some little cool things to do with that. But overall, a lot of people, in a lot of people's opinions, Bellamy is the worst of the batch because he has the least usage. You, there aren't that many times you need to reduce the enemy's increased defense or attack up. A lot of the times you can just break through it. The threshold damage reduction is actually a pretty good one though, but the thing is, is that Bellamy being a fighter driven Psy unit, there aren't that many teams that actually really want to use this Bellamy. Driven will get some better support in the future and they don't need this unit. Fighter honestly aren't the best class in the game, so if you're using fighter teams, they're not the best teams in the game, and pure Psy teams aren't really that great at the moment either, so there aren't that many instances where you would actually need to go ahead and use Bellamy in a lot of teams. But now that we've gone ahead and overviewed all of the rare recruits, let's go ahead and talk about the Brand new Sugar Fest exclusive of the batch. So I'd like to introduce you guys to the brand new Sugar Fest exclusive Isho, the next generation Navy HQ greatest military power. V2 Fujitora is an int slasher powerhouse character, and at max level at level 99, he gets 3,222 HP, 1,576 attack, and 344 recovery. Now let's move on to his captain ability. So, straight off the bat, increases damage received by 1.2 times. This is by far the worst part of his captain ability. The fact that when you run this guy as a captain, you take less damage is one of the biggest downfalls of this character and it's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't consider Fujitora to be one of the highest tier characters in the game. He is extremely powerful, he can still clear legitimately anything in the game, but he's just not as good as some other characters because you do receive quite a bit of damage. With double Fujitora, you're taking 1.44 extra damage. You're taking 44% extra damage that you don't really need to be taking, that you can't really uh, get around, you know, you can't really do much with that. So. Just that alone is a really big detriment to his captain ability, but it goes on, okay? So, on top of this, boost slasher character's attack by 3.25 at the start of the chain, and will boost the HP by 1.2 times. So, automatically you get a health boost, 3.25 base attack boost is extremely good. But then on top of this, slashers will get a boost of attack up to 4.225 following a chain of good, great, and then perfect hits. So he's like a like an upgraded Log Luffy for slashes. Um, so you start off 3.25 base, that is exceptional. But then it, when you do hit good, great, and then perfect, you get 4.225. Like that is exceptional. That's so much attack. He is the highest base attack boost in the game, uh, outside of Luffy Ace, which is you know only on Japan right now, but on global. He has the highest base attack out of any character in the entire game. 4.225 is the highest, okay? But the thing is, you have to hit good, great, and then perfect in order to reach that really high multiplier. Now, if you guys end up pulling V2 Fuji, the way I suggest using this character is to go ahead and just attack normally. Just hit perfects against regular mob characters because you have a base attack boost of 3.25. That is exceptionally good. Um, but the thing is, when you are against a single enemy, that's when you should be going ahead hitting good, great, and then perfect, getting the massive 4.225 boost, and then that will give you enough power to take down the enemy. Now, the fact that you do have to hit good, great, and then perfect, perfect means that your chain multiplier is never going to reach that max 2.5 times. So, the best thing to do in this situation is to bring a chain locker or a chain booster, but ideally a chain locker. And the best one to use is Treasure Mode Mihawk. Treasure Mode Mihawk will boost your orb effects by 2 times and lock your chain at 2.75 times. 
So, uh, Isho is going to love using Treasure Mode Mihawk as a sub or as a friend captain, really. However you want to use this character. Uh, but those two love each other. They are the best of friends. Treasure Mode Mihawk and this character. Very, very good partnership there. But now let's go ahead and talk about his insane special ability. So his special ability will go ahead and start at 18 turns and will go ahead and max at 13 turns. He will go ahead and deal 10 hits of 20 times his attack in typeless damage to random enemies. Then if this character is your captain or your friend or guest captain, he will change all orbs on slashes into matching orbs and then delay all enemies for one turn. So let's break down this cap the special ability, my bad. So, 10 hits of 20 times his attack. Now, if you're against a single enemy, that's 200 times his attack. That is crazy. That is so much damage that you're doing just with his special ability alone. But then on top of this, if he is your captain, then all of your slashes on your crew will just get matching orbs. Now, this again partners really well with Treasure Mode Mihawk. Treasure Mode Mihawk gives you a 2 times orb boost as well as the chain lock as well. So, as I, I need to keep reiterating this, Treasure Mode Mihawk and this guy are best of friends. You get such high attack power just with those two units alone. So that is exceptional. Um, but the fact that you have to use this character as the captain in order to get those matching orbs is pretty bad. I mean, this is very similar to uh, the situation with uh, Legend Zora. And I'm going to be uploading a video about Legend Zora very, very soon. But the thing is, with, with Zoro, you only get the two times special boost when you use him as a captain. If he is a sub, you only get a 1.75 boost. So it is annoying that these slashes are revolving around being your captain because it means you, you have so many good captains to choose from and you have to really make an executive decision on who you want to run on the team as the captain. Now, in my personal opinion, I've mentioned this just before at the start of the year and what a lot of people think, this guy is the best captain for slashes in the game right now. Really high boosts, uh, you get a little bit of a health boost, you, unfortunately you do take a little bit of extra damage, but the fact that he gives you that insane boost, 4.225 is exceptionally high for slashes, and also the fact that he has a really good special, dealing lots of damage, giving you those matching orbs, delaying all enemies as well. The fact that he delays is quite good because you can run some conditional boosts with that as well, so there are some conditional intertwines there which is very very good as well. But let's go ahead and talk about his Limit Break. So with his Limit Break, he actually goes ahead and gets Enrage, which is a 150 base attack boost when you go ahead and get the Enrage at max, which is very good. His Pinch Healing will heal you when you are below 50% at max, which is very nice as well. And he also gets a Critical Hit uh, ability, which is a 90% chance to deal 10% extra damage, which is the highest base critical hit potential ability in the entire game so he has the best one i believe uh mihawk the the intork limit break actually has the same critical hit as uh this character right here so this is a very very good uh potential ability system here you get enrage you get pinch healing and critical hit very very nice now let's talk about his sailor abilities his sailor abilities are pretty basic his first one will go ahead and boost your base uh, attack HP and recovery of slashes by 40, which is okay. And also, he has the second ability, which will go ahead and make all colored orbs, aside from his own one being int, because that's already matching, but all other colored orbs are treated as beneficial for this unit if your captain is a slasher. Uh, very, very good. Okay, so he's a very good unit overall. The only thing that really brings him down is the fact that, number one, he takes more damage when you use him as a captain, and number two, you have to use him as a captain to get the full abilities of his special which is the major drawbacks of this character but in my opinion i feel like the benefits definitely outweigh the negatives of this character as i mentioned before the best slasher captain in the entire game is it worth pulling for it really depends if you guys are really big into slasher teams then you might want to go for it or you could save for a future sugar fest down the line as well but overall this has been my breakdown of the entire v2 fuji batch so i really hope you guys did enjoy this video and if you guys did enjoy it make sure to smack the like button down below as it's always greatly appreciated and if you want to stay up to date with all the content i post including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but on that guys i'll see you guys within the next video